Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard the Wright Flyer. I'm Randy Wright, and I'll be your captain on this solo flight special edition of our state-of-the-art radio program. Folks, this will be the final boarding call, so if you please, claim your seats, fasten your seat belts, kick back, relax, and enjoy the show while I go ahead and delve into the pre-flight checklist, as there really is a lot of news and information to get to before I may fully indulge you with your in-flight entertainment. Well, folks, we see that the transition team with President-elect Donald J. Trump has continued. Today, it was announced that he has selected Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions for the Chief Law Enforcement Office of the United States, that of Attorney General. Now, the rumor mill, up until this announcement was made, had been pushing around the name of Texas Senator Ted Cruz. And in fact, the rumor mill had also indicated that that was the position that he was most interested in. But we see that once again, Donald J. Trump is continuing to play politics as usual. Senator Jeff Sessions has been touted as a stalwart conservative, yet when you actually look at his record, you see that for the most part, he is a dyed-in-the-wool member of the detente wing of the Gutless Opposition Party, or GOP. It's only on his immigration stance that he is allegedly conservative, and even there, when it has been rumored that he has helped write and create the proposed immigration reforms for the Donald Trump campaign, we see that he left open a backdoor amnesty, allowing people to get into line and to re-enter the United States in violation of federal law as it is well established. This is something that we have been warning about here at Radio Aviation Excellence, the right flyer, for over a year now, folks. Donald J. Trump simply is not who he claims to be. That is something that should be open and obvious to anyone who has been paying attention and observing this with a modicum of objectivity. But more so than that, it tells us that politics as usual is going to continue, and that just like the shallow, hollow, empty, and meaningless platitude of Make America Great Again was that, so too is this notion of draining the swamp. Donald Trump has no intention of draining the swamp. He doesn't want to rock the boat, so to speak, in such a manner. Instead, what he is hoping to achieve here is to continue to push for his bizarre and twisted notions, and that is not in the best interests of the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty, we the people. Of course, this is exactly happening as we said it would. So why is it so important that that we know that Jeff Sessions has been appointed as the next Attorney General of these United States. Well, according to the Politistic, there have been two huge new appointments by President-elect Trump. And one of the ones that they had is, of course, Jeff Sessions of Alabama. We know that Jeff Sessions has been close to Trump all throughout the 2016 campaign. In fact, during the early part of the primary process, he had alienated and, in fact, um, enraged many conservatives when he had stabbed Texas Senator Cruz in the back. But it's like what Jeremy and I have named this entire electoral process after. This is the election cycle of betrayal. People are selling out their souls. They're abandoning their core principles and convictions in order for political expediency, and that just is unacceptable. It's intolerable, and it's insufferable. Yet, I believe that these sorts of shenanigans to steal a phrase that was popularized by Trump throughout the campaign process to continue is just what we're going to expect. Do not expect Trump to magically become a conservative overnight. While he has paid lip service to this whole notion of being a conservative, we know for a fact that nothing could be further from the truth. The man has never once truly espoused conservative positions for the vast majority of his 70 years spent on God's green earth. But according to Jennifer Burke at the politistic, she starts this piece with, when then-Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump was trying to gain traction as a viable 
serious candidate, Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions was one of the first to back him. The backing of Sessions was so crucial that after Donald Trump won the presidency in November, many said that Sessions could likely get whatever post he wanted in the Trump administration. If that is the case, then what it tells me above all else is that Trump is not going to end the corruption. This is nepotism at its worst. This is rewarding the good old boys club for a man who used to have some very friendly things to say about the Ku Klux Klan. And that is something that is going to once again add fuel to the fire with the frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftists. Recall what Jeremy and I have oft times reiterated on previous episodes of Radio Aviation Excellence The Right Flyer. It's that the frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftists, who are hell bent on engaging in the tried and true, albeit threadbare, tactic and strategy of divide and conquer, will use this to stereotype the right. We know that they are going to do that. We've seen that with all of these allegedly just spontaneous protests that have been occurring in major cities from coast to coast and border to border ever since the outcome of the 2016 election, that they proclaim that it is because he's a racist, this, that, and the other, because, once again, he was slow to disavow the the endorsement he had received from former Grand Wizard of the KKK, David Duke. This after the fact that some 16 years ago he had penned an op-ed article in the New York Times in which he stated that the reason he was leaving Ross Perot's so-called Reform Party was because the white supremacist David Duke had joined as a member of that political party. You see, when your memory is long-running, and when you look to vet the candidates and to see whether what they're telling you is a load of drivel or is in fact the truth, it empowers you. And of course, as Jeremy and I have said before the election results had come in, the only litmus test that truly matters is whether those who were vying for the highest office in the land would abide by and follow the Constitution. That is the only test that truly matters, yet it was completely disregarded all throughout this disastrous 2016 presidential election cycle. Now, it was interesting here with what was said in the Politistic, because Jennifer Burke continued saying that there was speculation that Sessions had been considered as Director of Homeland Security or Secretary of Defense, since Sessions was formerly Attorney General of Alabama before becoming its Senator. There was the belief that what he really wanted was to be Attorney General of the United States. Well, it appears that he got his wish. It appears that nepotism is alive and well, and instead of draining the swamp, the swamp has just gotten deeper, much deeper than it had been previously. So what does this mean in the end run for how a Trump presidency might look in the coming four years? I think we're going to see more of the same. I think we're going to see that the detente wing of the Guntless Opposition Party, or GOP, has managed to take full control of the helm of the party that was once standing for limited government and for the Constitution. Unfortunately, they have not really stood for the Constitution for quite some time. We see that the drivel has continued. They have worsened things. They are continuing to be nothing short of Democrat lights. And that is what Trump is as well. And so I think what we're going to see is that our naming of this elect as the election of betrayal will continue over for this to be the presidency of deception and betrayal. I say deception because Donald J. Trump, in his capacity as the Pied Piper of disillusioned conservatives, managed to bamboozle a wide array of American voters, and not just American voters, but Republican voters in general. It's something that cannot be ignored. It's something that's there, that continues to rear its ugly head as the political season continues, and what all that means is that 
people are going to be disillusioned and disenfranchised even more so than they had been previously. We had tried to warn you, and we know that the vast majority of our cherished listening passengers and audience members disagreed with a Trump presidency as well. But as I stated on yesterday's Solo Flight Special Edition of our state-of-the-art radio program, we don't want there to be failure, per se, because that means that the nation will fail. But it is our duty and our obligation and, above all, our responsibility in our capacity as the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing representative republic of ours to hold those officers in the federal government accountable for their words, deeds, and actions, and therefore we will be a loud voice to announce from any available opportunity and at any given time, every time, that the Trump camp basically disavows the Constitution or distances and divorces itself from the clear and concise language contained within the four corners of our shared United States Constitution. It's as Jeremy and I have so oft times stated and reiterated on previous episodes of the Right Flyer, it's that the only way we can ever hope to truly place this nation back onto the path of prosperity is to return to strict adherence to the Constitution at all levels of government. That really is how cut and dry and simple this is. There's no way around that, folks, and it is what we're facing. And unless and until we are willing to come to grips and terms with this reality, this sort of chicanery will continue not only unabated, but I believe it will accelerate exponentially. But here is the other thing. We know that now the news is in, and Donald Trump has indeed selected Sessions to be Attorney General. While he has accepted, he must be confirmed through Congress. We know that this Congress will just rubber stamp anything because it's controlled by the Republican Party. They want there to be this appearance as though there is great unity within the party and that the divisions and fissures that had erupted throughout this tumultuous and turbulent uh, election have been healed once and for all. But that's a bunch of drivel. Nothing could be further from the truth. The civil war that is going to continue between true, dyed-in-the-wool constitutional compositionists and the alt-right and the various other disparate and competing factions will continue. And, of course, it goes directly to the warning that the father of our nation, George Washington, had given to us in his farewell address. He told us to do everything that is humanly possible to avoid basically breaking down into these competing disparate factions, because in so doing we begin to lose the overarching picture of what matters for the nation. And indeed, one of the things that we have lamented here at Radio Aviation Excellence, the right flyer, is the fact that there is no more civil discourse in this country. It's as though no one actually believes that there is a greater good for the nation. But when we stop and think about it, and think about the foundational spirit that buoyed our nation to such lofty heights in her relatively brief yet illustrious history, we must come to one inexorable conclusion. And that conclusion is this, that there is something unique and exceptional about the United States. American exceptionalism is rooted in the notion that our entire system of polity, and indeed our entire constitutionally endowed Federalist Representative Republic is based on the immutable natural law tenets. Those tenets are just as applicable today as they were at the foundation of our nation some 235 plus years ago as God willing they will be some 235 years from today. But it still requires that we the people believe it. It still requires that we be proactive in maintaining and safeguarding our fundamental and inalienable rights which were endowed to us by our Creator, who happens to be none other than the God of nature himself. 
Now I know that this is far easier said than done, but done it must be, and we, in our capacity, as the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty, are the only ones who really have the authority, the capability, and the wherewithal to accomplish this. There is no way around that, folks. But, again, there has been the second announcement. This second announcement, according to Jennifer Burke at The Politistic, is that Representative Mike Pompeo uh, from Kansas has been appointed to and accepted the CIA director position. Like Sessions, Pompeo's confirmation must go through Congress. Although Pompeo initially backed Florida Senator Marco Rubio in the crowded GOP presidential candidate field, according to Burke, he played a big role in prepping now Vice President-elect Mike Pence prior to his debate with Tim Kaine. Pompeo has also been a vocal critic of Obama's Iran nuclear deal. But we know already that Trump has come forth and said that he's backing off from fully repealing or tearing up that Iran nuclear deal. Again, the betrayals that we warned about going all the way back to the primary process are coming forth in near prophetic fashion. And it shows us, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that what we're dealing with, with respect to Donald Trump, is just more of the same and political payback, nepotism of its worst kind. That's the sort of backroom politicking that drives the American people insane. It is what has literally disenfranchised huge swaths of the American electorate, and I don't see this improving at any point within the foreseeable future. But there's something I want you to remember. When you think about how Trump is pushing forth all of these sorts of insiders, for lack of a better term, I want you to recall what it was that he said in front of the rank and file of the graduates of Pavlov School of Journalism for the salivating mainstream media when he proclaimed boldly that he could go on to Fifth Avenue and shoot someone and not lose a single voter. As we have always said here at Radio Aviation Excellence the Right Flyer, we don't want you to take our word for it. We want you to hear it from the people themselves, and then to empower yourselves by looking into it for yourselves. Remember that he had said that, and remember that that is also a way in which he is trying to laugh at and yuck it up against his most ardent acolytes and followers. He essentially is saying that they were trapped, trapped to support him, irrespective of what he has said or done, and that is not something I think we should accept. That is not something that I believe represents the better angels of our nature. Rather, that is something that we should discuss in further detail as a nation and as a people, coming together, standing shoulder to shoulder in solidarity and unity to reject what it is that Trump has pushed forth here, and that is cronyism. Recall that one of the things that has just driven people nuts is the crony capitalism that has gone forth. Remember Solyndra with Barack Hussein Obama. Remember all of those just seedy, unsightly, un and, and just unacceptable things that he had pushed forth. Unless and until we are willing to deal with that, and to be truly, fully honest and faithful to our constitutional tenets, these sorts of problems will continue. And it is just that sort of corruption that I thought is what had attracted so many of Trump's followers to him was that he was going to get rid of that. Recall, train the swamp, this, that, and the other. It was all political kabuki theater at its absolute worst. But, when you see that he's doing all of this nepotism, and when you, if you happen to be one of the Trump supporters, start feeling betrayed, I want you to remember this clip that I am about to play. 
I want you to think about that. I want you to realize that what he was doing there and what he was saying there is exactly what he's doing now. He was laughing at you. He was making you his mark. And that makes sense. It's why he had earned the name Don the Con. But before I move on, it's time that we play that clip. And Trump returns the respect by recognizing regular, hard-working Americans are a lot smarter than any of the ideological eunuchs in all of their pontificating glory. It's true. The people, my people are so smart. And you know what else they say about my people? The polls. They say, I have the most loyal people. Did you ever see that? Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. <laughs> no, they say, Trump, we love you too, man. Trump's voters are by far, you know, the, uh, I'm at 68, 69%. I'm at 90% total. Like, will you say absolutely? I think it's 68 or 69%. Will you most likely stay? That gets into the 90s. Other guys are like a 10. A guy like Jeb Bush, he has a nobody, but he's like a, a not, I mean, like, they don't have people. They have nothing. Uh, Rubio, soft. They're all, all soft. As you can see from that clip, it shows exactly in demonstrable evidence what Trump was doing and what his plans are and how they will pan out for this once thriving and flourishing representative republic and vibrant community of popular sovereigns of ours. It goes to show that the swamp is not being drained, that it's being dredged up, that the muck is being swirled around, and that it will continue to be disastrous for the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in these United States of America, we the people. Of course, there is something we can do. Whenever these people that he is selecting to be in his cabinet, and whenever he himself, he, of course, being Donald J. Trump, strays from the clear and concise language contained within the four corners of our shared United States Constitution, then it is our duty, obligation, but above all, responsibility to hold him accountable for his words, deeds, and actions. There really is no other way around that, folks. There's no way to sugarcoat that or to candy coat it. And again, I'm going to point back to what Sam Adams had said back during the halcyon days of our republic. He warned the people that the way for our republic to flourish is for the republic to be virtuous. That means that the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty, we the people, are supposed to have a fluent and working knowledge and understanding of the Constitution as well as their, you, you, you know, their fundamental and inalienable God-given rights. And it means that they must properly vet their candidates and, even after properly vetting their candidates, hold those candidates accountable when they become office holders in the United States. That is part of the whole notion of a self-policing constitutional representative republic. You know why the United States of America has been the longest contiguous, meaning uninterrupted running constitutional document in the entire course of the human condition? It is because we the people are the true harbingers of power. We are the ones that delegated power and authority to the federal government, which is limited to those powers which are expressly enumerated unto the three respective branches of government by the Constitution itself. That is why that contract, because it literally is a social contract, is so important. It it codifies our rights, it limits the government from encroaching upon those rights, and it reminds us that the government was established in order to ensure that our rights are protected. Our founding fathers, in their sagacity and infinite wisdom and foresight, fully understood that these nefarious forces that are hell-bent on you know, forcing us into despotism, tyranny, and oppression will not back down. It's as Ronald Reagan had said that liberty is always just one generation away from extinction. And he's right. 
liberty is but one generation away from extinction and therefore it falls squarely on our shoulders in our capacity as the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing representative republic of ours to do our utmost to ensure that the constitution is protected that our rights are not belittled or encroached upon and that we do not allow agent provocateurs of tyranny despotism and oppression to be able to clutch or wield the reins of political power in this nation again this goes back to what my first officer jeremy graventon has so oft times reiterated on previous episodes of radio aviation excellence the right flyer he said your rights are the most important thing and if you allow the federal government to strip you of your rights without due process under the law then you are allowing the government to take away everything from you and it's why alexis de tocqueville had said that those who support any type of socialism are actually in point of fact new age feudalists it's because feudalism as a system of polity sought to micromanage the facets of the daily lives of the separate castes and there literally was a caste system in which there it was stratified you could not move uh, without you know extraordinary works of god practically from one to the other there was the workers on the land there were those who fought and then there were those who prayed and of course the ones who fought that's your nobility and the top of that was the king and that's where the whole notion of sovereignty comes from the king was known as a sovereign but our history began with the development of the natural law tenets on that muddy field in the summer of 1215 in runnymede england when king john the first of robin hood fame was forced by the baronage of england to sign the great charter or magna carta that limited the power of the king and i know that i've mentioned this almost to the point of it being ad nauseum on previous episodes of radio aviation excellence the right flyer but it is so on point particularly when we see the type of nepotism that is taking full control within the trump camp it's a repeat of that it is a slow withering away of the notion that the true absolute power of popular sovereign authority rests with we the people we have got to recall that our duty and obligation is to ensure that the government does not abuse the power that was delegated to them again when you turn to the first amendment we all know about freedom of religion and the freedom of expression but the other part of that is that the people have the right to petition their government for a redress of grievances in other words that the government cannot just simply ignore the people and it was thomas jefferson the man who had penned the poetic language that gave us the the declaration of independence who said that sometimes from time to time the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of patriots and tyrants alike now we certainly hope that's not what comes to fruition but these times particularly when tensions have been ratcheted up to as high of a degree as they have been and when raw emotionalism and hysteria have taken over the hearts souls and minds of the body politique of this once thriving and flourishing representative republic and vibrant community of popular sovereigns of ours it means it is ripe for such tumult turmoil and chaos to take control in the united states it's the last thing we want to see but we also must fully realize and be cognizant and aware of the fact that that is one of the options that our founding fathers placed on the table because it's exactly what they did 
when the British Crown and Parliament had acted in a way as to besmirch and belittle their natural rights. Natural rights. Why is that so important? Because it ties directly into those immutable natural law principles that are just as applicable today as they were at the beginning of this nation some 235 years ago, as God willing they will be some 235 years from today. It is our duty, our obligation, but above all our responsibility as a nation and as a people to hold those who wield the reins of political power accountable for their words, deeds, and actions. It is part of that natural aspect of the great social compact or contract that exists between we the people and our government. And to be a free nation, we must abide by that. We cannot forget that. We cannot disregard that. It is a quintessential fundamental pillar of who we are. And unfortunately, that has been swept under the rug by the graduates of Pavlov School of Journalism for the salivating mainstream media and the historical revisionists who have dominated our institutions of education from coast to coast and border to border. And so the only way that we can begin to really rein in this corruption is to make our voices be heard, to be a powerful force, and to stand up against them at every opportunity. Since we are on the topic of corruption, one of the things that has come to the forefront is that Donald J. Trump is about to settle the Trump University fraud case for an alleged $25 million. Recall that all throughout the campaign trail, this has been one of those issues that stuck out in a thorn in its side, and it was originally attempted to be used during the primary process as a weapon against the mafioso quafioso. But again, I'm reminded of what Sam Adams called on us to be all the way back in the halcyon days of this once thriving and flourishing representative republic and vibrant community of popular sovereigns of ours. He called on us to to be a virtuous republic. That means that our people had to be virtuous, but also our elected leaders. That is an area where we have fallen short. It is an area where Donald Trump's continued problems here continue to really be something that sticks out, something that should have really crippled him during the campaign process, but did not. And again, I think a lot of that ties into the fact that the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing representative republic and vibrant community of popular sovereigns of ours have just grown entirely frustrated with politics as usual. They're tired of the politicians lying, as they always had been, and refusing to carry through with the promises that they had made over and over again ad nauseum. Failure to deliver promises only manages to rile up the anger of the voters, and that is always something that comes across as detrimental. It's something that does not play out well. But with respect to what Trump is doing here, he is trying to settle with the New York State Attorney General, a, who goes by the name Schneiderman, who wants him to pay upwards of 20 to 25 million dollars to compensate those who were bamboozled by the private for-profit um, real estate school or lesson plan that had been created by Trump. And the fact of the matter is, this whole thing is not going away. It will not go away because Trump University is one of those things that can only be described as scandalous. It represents the worst characteristics and attributes of the man and the greed that he has gone forth with. And I don't see that getting better at any time within the foreseeable future. But there's a reason why Trump is wanting this to go forward. We already know that the Trump transition team has announced that on the Friday that he was scheduled to be in the San Diego court in front of Judge Q 
Curiel um, that he was going to be doing a victory tour of the states that he won on election night. So this is already Trump trying to get this taken care of before he uh, faces his inaugural address. And the whole notion of uh, basically sovereign immunity comes into play here. We know that from the Clinton days that a president could be brought into court for issues that arose before he was elected. In other words, when you had issues pending the, the, in, in front of courts that had been filed before he became the president-elect, it would still go forward. And again, that plays to this whole notion of what we call the equal protection under the law. That It goes to that whole old adage with respect to the United States that the United States is a nation of laws and not of men. It ties directly to the idea that irrespective of who we are or what our rank, title, race, sex, um, sexual orientation, religion, it doesn't matter, the law applies equally across the board. That is something that we have to take to heart. It is a quintessential aspect of who we are, both as a nation and as a people. But unfortunately, we see that corruption has become the new established norm of the American system of polity. And if you think back to what I had said during the previous segment with, you know, Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions being chosen and then that Pomino guy from um, Kansas being selected. That's nepotism. Again, it's nepotism playing out and attempting to essentially make the establishment wing and this new alt-right happy while leaving true dyed-in-the-wool constitutional compositionists out in the cold. That, of course, is by design. It is done purposefully, intentionally, willfully, all to push forth this narrative that is detrimental to us all, both as a nation and as a people. But, of course, what we can take away from it is that Trump is trying to escape from the skeletons that exist in his bigly, or is that big league, walk-in closet that has so many skeletons hidden away within that it really ought to be called a walk-in cemetery. That's right, folks. The entire aspect of Trump and his corruption will continue to be a dominating factor of these four years. We know that the rank and file of the graduates of Pavlov School of Journalism for the salivating mainstream media will attempt to use this to gain as much control and influence as they can over the narrative, because that's exactly what they have always done. And as I mentioned in the previous segment, it they will use this to try and create that stereotype to tar all conservatives with that broad brush, because deep down that is ultimately what they always seek to do. They loathe and despise who we are and the message that we convey because they realize that if they were forced to compete fairly in the free marketplace of ideas that their twisted and dark machinations would never be accepted by the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty, we the people, because it is literally theft by any other name. That is the truth that is self-evident. It is a truth they cannot escape, but they will continue to try and escape it. But Trump literally is one who has a spouse. Frothing at the mouth, Fabian Socialist left this positions for the vast majority of his 70 years spent on God's green earth. And he is once again looking at this in an opportunistic fashion to try and basically cement his legacy, to continue to move forward in a way that is detrimental for the American people. And I wish this weren't the case. I wish that he was somebody that we could claim was a forthright citizen, a citizen who cared about the hopes, dreams, and aspirations of the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty, we the people. Now, of course, the Lion Branch Trumpvidians who continue to congregate in their Trumpvidian tabernacle are going to say that I'm 
being intellectually disingenuous for focusing on this, that I'm playing into the so-called liberal talking points. But no, I'm talking towards that quintessential aspect of what is necessary for our republic to thrive, the virtuous republic. When we have nepotism and corruption continuing to swirl around this president, it makes me fearful of the scandals that will erupt during his four-year tenure. And I do have a feeling that the way that the left has been reacting this entire time, that they're going to go forth and be able to gain power. With, you know, driven by this raw emotional hysteria that grips their hearts, souls, and minds, they are going to try and redraw the political map. And it will be a much bigger backlash than what we saw with the Tea Party movement and Barack Hussein Obama with the midterm elections of 2010 and 2014. So, what does it mean? for the political landscape in the future. It means that we have to be cognizant that even though this case is being settled, it does not mean that it's going to be ignored. Yes, Trump is going to sit there and say in the settlement that he had a clause there in which he did not admit fault, as that was one of the requirements that his attorneys have worked into the uh, uh, um, settlement agreement that's going forth that could be out as early as this Friday, but what it tells me is that the left doesn't have to follow by that. They're going to say, he settled. And even though he doesn't admit wrongdoing, it is circumstantial evidence that he had, in fact, engaged in wrongdoing and had defrauded these people, and it will allow them to go forth with their false narrative and drivel that they are still the party for the little guy. And that's unfortunate. It truly is. The other aspect of the Trump University fraud case that comes back to mind is how even though he's settling it, it it has not taken back the thing that he had said all throughout the campaign trail where Judge Gonzalo Curiel, who is a Chicago-born American native of Mexican descent, was basically lambasted as being unable to hand out fair justice in the Trump University case because of Trump's willingness to go out and build a wall between the United States of America and Mexico. It's that sort of uh, drivel that literally gives credence to the alt-right that is a real threat to dyed-in-the-wool constitutional compositionists. As my first officer, Jeremy Grapenton, and I have oft-times pointed out on previous episodes of Radio Aviation Excellence, The Right Flyer, when you look at what it is that the alt-right used to define nationalism in the United States of America, it has no connotation nor connection with the supreme law of the land which pursues to Article 6, Clause 2 is none other than our shared United States Constitution. But it also tells us that Trump will use any excuse to try and push forward this narrative that the system is somehow rigged against him, and how everything is truly just unfair to him. And that is something I have a problem with, because it does not speak to the truth. It just goes to show that he is willing to say and do anything for his own self-aggrandizement, thereby making we the people the marks of his system once again. And that is something we should not accept because it goes against the strain of who we are, both as a nation and as a people. The United States of America stands for much more than what is being shown here, and it is an ugly characteristic that Trump is tapping into, one that should not be embraced. But we see now that he wants to do this settlement again to try and act as though nothing had ever happened. You see, the danger with respect to that is that Trump literally is once again acting in such a way as he thinks he's above the, the law. He thinks that there is a special niche carved out just for himself. And recall that one of the other promises that he walked back is in response to what his people had been chanting at those Trump rallies over and over again, which was uh, lock her up. 
But now he's saying that no, he doesn't want to convene a special prosecutor because he doesn't want to hurt the Clintons because the Clintons are good people. Recall that he had both Bill and Hillary at his third wedding, the wedding to the current Czech thumper, Malaria Trumpolini. That was done because... He liked the Clintons. He supported them. Recall that in '09 he said that Hillary Clinton was a fantastic Secretary of State and that she could do things that no one else could. What that tells me is that Trump is still dedicated to having a strong-handed centralized government, which is completely, totally, and diametrically opposed to our limited, constitutionally endowed Federalist Representative Republic. Again, this is why we say that it is of the utmost importance that we hold these people accountable, that we hold Trump accountable, because if he keeps walking things back, it is really going to, as I mentioned in the previous segment, cement this notion of the 2016 election cycle being the election cycle of betrayal. And I do have to wonder, with respect to a lot of the Trump videos, are they just going to continue making excuses when their pet issues issue after successive issue are thrown under the bus. And when he just makes up every excuse, are they going to just keep buying into that as though it is the greatest thing since sliced bread? That's the feeling I have, irrespective of the fact that there are so many of them who have come forth and said that if Trump does not stay true to the Constitution and does not honor the multitude of promises he made while out on the campaign trail, that they would be with the never-Trumpers holding his feet to the fire. I don't believe them. I don't believe them because they have already demonstrated a lack of judgment. Now, I know that I've mentioned this on a previous Solo Flight special edition of our state-of-the-art radio program, but it is so important that it bears repeating again here. We must be cognizant of the fact that they missed this, and just because this case is settled, and just because there is going to be that non-fault clause, which is boilerplate language, meaning just standard legalese, it does not mean that what he did was right. And, as I said, the frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftists and their allies in the rank and file of the graduates of Pavlov School of Journalism for the salivating mainstream media will use this to bludgeon Republicans across the board in 2018. It means that we could lose the House and Senate in 2018. And it makes sense that that would happen. It's usually the course, historically speaking, that when one party controls two of the three alleged co-equal branches of government, that they are then ousted in the midterm elections because, let's face it, people like quagmire in government. More often than not, the best thing that the government can do is nothing. Unfortunately, we have kicked the can too far down the road with out-of-control fiscal policies, with further distancing and divorcing ourselves from the Constitution that has inevitably contributed to those problems that continue to rear their ugly heads in this country, that we must be willing, ready, and able to hold these people accountable. And with all of the nepotism and corruption that has become the hallmark of this 2016 election thus far, this is only going to get worse. We're not draining the swamp by putting Jeff Sessions in as Attorney General. We're not draining the swamp by having even Mitt Romney considered for Secretary of State. Yes, of course he's trying to build bridges, but with whom? Not with true dyed-in-the-wool constitutional compositionists who literally want to see this nation placed back on to the path of prosperity to restore prosperity by restoring strict adherence to our shared constitution, the supreme law of the land, at all levels of government. No, he's not building that bridge because he is against them. Recall, he, he is the one that went out there and reiterated 
ad nauseum over and over again that it is the Republican Party, not the Conservative Party, and that he wanted to reach out to disenfranchised Bernie Sanders voters, those who supported the self-avowed quote-unquote democratic socialist. Why did we choose a man who would reach out to disillusioned socialists? instead of reaching to the constitutional compositionist that was there, ready, willing, and able to place this nation back onto the path of prosperity by unlocking the chains and shackles that have been inhibiting and been blocking the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing representative republic of ours, we the people. It's because... We allowed ourselves to be whipped up into hysteria, into a raw emotional state in which we lost sight of the things that matter. And when we do that, we can no longer claim to be a virtuous republic. In other words, we are betraying the principles and convictions that Sam Adams demanded that we had and in his sagacity and infinite wisdom and foresight said was absolutely necessary for us to have a robust and free republic. That's the only way for the republic to thrive. It's self-responsibility and self-accountability working in tandem to give us self-determination. That is what makes the United States of America great. That never really went away. When you don't follow the Constitution, when you ignore the Constitution, that is when you have these problems. And so draining the swamp is as shallow, hollow, and empty, as well as meaningless of a platitude as make America great again. Because he's drudging the swamp out. He's making the swamp deeper. And that is only going to come back to haunt the American people and harm the American people. And I think that is something we must keep in mind. And therefore, we must hold him accountable for all that he says and does. I guess that's why when we look at this, this entire election cycle really is aptly named the election cycle of betrayal. The American people have come to expect this, and it's politics as usual. That is tragic and unfortunate, and I wish it weren't the case. But Trump is of the type that he acts on that, and he will, again, turn to these insiders and proclaim that he is an outsider working for the best interests of the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing republic of ours, but again, nothing could be further from the truth. We have been on to this, and we have been bringing it to the forefront for you for a very long time now, because we want the American people to be empowered here at Radio Aviation Excellence, the right flyer. And so it behooves us to literally think about what it is that has been harming us as a nation and a people, particularly when considering that Donald J. Trump is the president-elect. We know that he has basically gone forth and said whatever he wanted to to get what he needed to get what was good for him and nothing else. And recall that after he had met with Obama in the Oval Office, he said that he was wanting to keep parts of Obamacare. And that goes directly in line with a lot of what he had been saying earlier on, that the government's three responsibilities are are, are health care and education and security. But it's not really going to to work for us. Not the way they said. It was all just designed to make him look better. That's what it comes down to. It literally comes down to this. And it's interesting that with respect to Sessions, going back to him being selected as the Attorney General, it's it's interesting to note that there is a Republican judge, 
or not a Republican judge, but a Republican and Navarro, said that Sessions was too racist to be a judge back in the 1980s, once again bringing up his connections with the Ku Klux Klan. And of course, that is not something that the frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftists are going to let go of. They see this as their perfect opportunity to once and for all deal the final crushing, defeating blow of the Republican Party, to make them this one party that is engaging in their ridiculous claims of the Republican war on women, the Republican war on minorities. It always comes down to that. That is always the script and narrative that they put forth. And unfortunately, some of these choices that Trump has made is adding fuel to the fire. But when we look at the results from the election, it's quite clear that the American electorate doesn't care. They don't. It's because identity politics has been pushed to the point of having no meaning left. It has been utilized in such a way and to such a degree and to a point that it no longer carries any favor, value, or meaning, and that's exactly what we see coming to fruition. But here's the interesting thing. The whole reason that Trump became normalized and became acceptable is because of the progressive press. And they were there in the beginning praising him. Why were they praising him? Again, they wanted him in there because they thought he would be the easiest candidate to defeat. That, that aspect hasn't changed. In fact, the WikiLeaks document dumps proves that beyond a shadow of a doubt. It shows just how near prophetic we here at Radio Aviation Excellence, the Wright Flyer, really were when it came to making the predictions about why the graduates of Pavlov School of Journalism for the Salivating Mainstream Media had been giving Trump such, such disproportionate amounts of free air times, three times as much as his nearest primary rival. And the reason they did it is they thought he was weak. They thought that they could use this to their advantage. They thought that they could bamboozle the American people and thereby allow a frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftist in. And in a way, they are right. A frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftist has been elected president of these United States. And it's Trump. Trump, for the vast majority of his adult life, of his 70 years spent here on God's green earth, has espoused these Fabian socialist leftist positions. And that has not changed. That is not going to change. That is just the nature of the beast, and there is no escaping it. It is one of those ugly truths that is self-evident, is nagging, and refuses to go away. But it's interesting that today Jonah Goldberg at National Review had published a piece in which he said the same progressives who had gone forth in the winter praising Trump are now whining about him. Well, of course they are. It's because he's not their progressive. And that's the thing. Progressives get territorial like that. Frothing at the mouth, left-wing progressives have always been territorial. Communists would fight amongst one another because they thought their version of communism was the most right. But the problem is, what we've lost sight of in this foray, in this comedy of errors, for lack of a better term, is the fact that the Constitution is the ultimate driving force of this nation and of we the people. The fact that we have lost sight of that is tragic. The fact that we have lost sight of that also tells me that we are in a precarious position, one that shows no signs of improving at any time in the foreseeable future. Do not think that this is going to be a wonderful time for conservatives. Donald Trump will weaken the conservative movement. He will, again, allow the frothing at the mouth Fabian socialist leftists to paint all conservatives as fitting into that tight little package of the alt-right. 
And don't think that the left is feeling dejected. Yes, they're out there acting depressed. But they are a wounded animal, as J.D. Rucker had said yesterday on the Tech Guy blog. They are out there. They are reorganizing. They are rebuilding. They are preparing to unleash a wave of mass hysteria against the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty, the likes we haven't seen in living memory. And that is a frightening thought. It is a frightening thought because they were so close, in their mind at least, to achieving their dark and twisted goals and machinations that they see this as the perfect opportunity to unleash hell. And that is what they're going to do. That is what they believe is their duty and obligation and responsibility. And so... With Trump trying to reach out to disenfranchise Bernie Sanders voters, this is going to be one hell of a four-year ride. It's going to be one in which people are going to be frustrated over and over again. It's He's not even been sworn in yet. And he's already walking back promises. He's already showing that he is a carnival barker and snake oil salesman. All of the things we said about him have come to fruition. We knew this to be true. We tried to warn the American people, and we will continue to be the new resistance, to be the voice of liberty, to ensure that the American people do not lose their fundamental and inalienable God-given rights, and that we come together standing shoulder to shoulder in solidarity and unity to hold this government accountable. Because this government has already proven that it is not going to be one that runs on restraint, that it is not going to be one advocating for small, limited government. And therefore, we must make them. That is what we can do as the true ultimate wielders of popular sovereignty in this once thriving and flourishing representative republic of ours. Now, with that said, it is time for us to begin our descent. I'm going to go ahead and send the flight attendant back for one last round of alcohol. Folks, she has not been selected for any superior position other than to pour you alcohol. As always, I'm your captain, Randy Wright, and I want to thank you for choosing to fly the right flyer. Should you have any questions, comments, concerns, or even topic suggestions, please feel free to leave them in the comment sections, either here on our YouTube page or our Google Plus page, or, yes, even our Facebook page. And, on top of all of that, I invite you to follow us at Twitter with the Twitter handle at RadioAviationEX. One more time, folks, that's at RadioAviationEX, and there you will find the departure board that lists my first officer, Jeremy Grapenton's personal Twitter account, my personal Twitter account, the Blogspot account where we put up links to the video as well as audio-only versions of our state-of-the-art radio program so that you can listen to it at your leisure and in the way you would like to. And then there is the Cafe Press account where we have all sorts of trinkets and goodies from hats, shoes, neckties, coffee mugs, drinking glasses, laptop protectors, tote bags, you name it, with either our original logo of Radio Aviation Excellence The Right Flyer, our first class passenger logos, and then there's the two Uplifting America logos, which is new. It is the holiday season, folks. These make great stocking stuffers and great gifts. So go ahead and give us a little bit of support and thereby support yourself. And we will see you again next time. Please do take care.